Hey YouTube, Mark here, and it is another cooking video. That's right, I'm keeping the rotation going. Uh, biker video, hiking video, cooking video. Biking hi video, hiking video, cooking video. So I'm still trying to keep that same rotation. Although now that I think about it, I don't think it's in that exact order. But anyway, uh, another really good easy meal. This is a crock pot meal, but it doesn't take all day to make either. This is a quick <laughs> a quick three hour um, long cooking process for a crock pot meal which for a crock pot uh, that's nothing so let me show you what I got laid out here this is bourbon chicken crock pot style we're gonna start with three to four pounds of chicken thighs these are boneless skinless chicken thighs and I've actually cut them up into uh, eh, about three maybe four pieces on larger thighs I got a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, four cloves of garlic minced. This is a one third cup of apple juice, one and a half teaspoons of honey, a quarter cup of brown sugar, quarter cup of ketchup, quarter cup of apple cider, quarter cup of bourbon, any bourbon you want, and then a quarter cup of soy sauce now this one here i'll get to in a little bit and then i've also got a slurry mix of water and cornstarch that will be added at the end of the cooking process by the way i'm sorry for the humming noise that you're hearing it is summertime it's hot around here so we do have air conditioners going uh, i don't have central air so that's why you're hearing a, a slight humming noise in the video i don't want to turn the air conditioner completely off um, this is the soy sauce that we're going to use. Now this is a homemade no sodium soy sauce. I'll put the recipe for making your own in the description down below. You can also use just regular soy sauce or even low sodium soy sauce. But for Jen to keep this in a low sodium uh, area, uh, it does have some sodium in the whole recipe, but you know, a no sodium soy sauce really helps a lot. Now we have made a slight modification to the recipe. In fact, this recipe was something my wife found on Pinterest. It was, um, I think it was something like spend with pennies or something like that. And like I said, she found it on Pinterest. And we really like this thing a lot. But we have added a tablespoon of Zatarans. This is actually the Zatarans we use. It's the garlic and herb seasoning. I also use that on frozen pizzas. And it's a lot of good flavor. Okay, the other thing I want to talk to you about is the bourbon. Now, you can use pretty much any whiskey, bourbon, scotch that you like, okay? In fact, this is a Southern Comfort. So, yeah, just pretty much anything you like. And I always say that if you don't like to drink it, don't put it in your food. So, some little SoCo. That'll go a long way. All right, so actually the first thing I want to do is I actually want to just take my chicken thigh strips and put them in my crock pot. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna take all my ingredients here and put them in a container. So there's my tablespoon of Zatarans, quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, four cloves of minced garlic, One third cup of apple juice, one and a half tablespoons of honey, quarter cup brown sugar, quarter cup of ketchup, The quarter cup of cider vinegar, quarter cup of water, quarter cup of bourbon, and the quarter cup of soy sauce. Just want to stir this and bring it all together. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I think that's pretty good. I'm not feeling any uh, like thick brown sugar areas. I don't feel anything hitting the spoon, so it's pretty well dissolved in. Now we're just going to pour it over the chicken. Just like that. Now we can set it on low for six to seven hours or high for three hours. Of course, don't forget to slap on the lid. Okay, so everything's in the crock pot. It's going. I don't have to worry about anything. I could go in there and kind of toss it in the liquid just a little bit, but I'm not worrying about it right now. Uh, maybe a little later in the cooking process, I'll just give it a quick little stir just to make sure, you know, it's not one big solid mass. Um, but serving options with this, um, we typically go over just plain white rice. Um, you can do whatever you want. You can do um, spaghetti noodles or anything like that. It, it's all up to you. And then, of course, other options with the dish is just limited to your imagination. You can do any types of vegetables from carrots and broccoli to corn and peas to basically anything. Uh, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, whatever you want to do. Um, like I said, we typically go with standard white rice. We'll cook that off in, in the uh, rice cooker. Uh, find that that's the easiest way. It doesn't burn or anything like that. And then uh, we'll just have some sort of vegetable with it. I think I have some... You know what? I'm not sure exactly what I have. I think I have some green beans in the, in the freezer. I'll have to look. But anyway, so yeah, that's the the main recipe for putting together the suburban chicken and it's really good it really is give this one a shot and like i said before i'll put the low sodium or the no sodium soy sauce that my wife makes i'll put that in the description down below so you can make your own if you need to i'm recording oh well thanks for letting me know i'll let you know i hit the button i told you i was recording <laughs> Okay, so Han, what did I screw up on this recipe? Well, not so much that you screwed it up as we've tweaked the recipe and added yeah. a couple ingredients that I really enjoy in this dish. So we're going to add them to the dish today as well. Yeah, she put them as handwritten notes, which I don't really look at when I'm doing the recipes. I just look at the piece of paper itself. So we're going to add some mushrooms. I personally like the mini um, Baby Bella portobello mushrooms. Our grocery store actually has some pre-sliced, so I did buy some of those. I also have some that I need to slice up because I only bought one package, so I have to slice the other And they're package. opened and we need to use them up, so. Yeah, um, I usually throw in about a pound of mushrooms. It sounds like a lot. It cooks down. Mushrooms decrease and yeah. lose a lot of water as they cook. Most veggies do. Um, I usually add an onion. Today, again, we're using vegetables that we have to get rid of. So we have half a red onion and half of a white onion. Um, both of these are fairly on the large size. Feel free to use as much or as little onion as you like. We like onions, so I'm using a large onion. I would say that's probably uh, one full onion total. Yeah, I agree. Um, I also have a can of water chestnuts. I get the pre-sliced stuff because, well, I don't want to have to try and slice them up myself. And as far as the water chestnuts go, I look for the ones with the lowest sodium possible because of my dietary restrictions. So I'm going to slice up the mushrooms, I'm going to chunk, chunk up the onion, and I'm just going to throw it all in the pot and give it a good stir. Sounds good. Let's watch Jen cut her fingers. He has no faith in me. I have no faith in her. I've actually seen her, in anger, slap her hand on the counter and hit the food processor blade and go to the emergency room to get stitches. One time. So do I trust her? Not at all. This is probably more of a dice than a chop. I have a small mouth and I like small pieces. Yeah, just 
throw that piece away. Let's get that little uh, end on it. So, Han, how are my knife skills? They suck. Shut up. <laughs> Sorry, culinary training. I know how to use a knife. Just because I want to be able to open the pot once and throw everything in all at one time. Did you mention why we use Zatarans and not the No, crushed? because, no, I, I didn't. Nothing was written as okay. to why. Okay, so I do have a little story to go with the recipe. The recipe calls for, I think it's a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. The first time I made the recipe, I grabbed Zatarans the Zatarans blend instead of the crushed red pepper flakes. I don't like the red pepper flakes. I think they're too hot. I misread the recipe and threw in a tablespoon instead of a teaspoon. But it doesn't even call for red pepper flakes. Yes, it doesn't. It's crossed out. Oh. So I threw in the tablespoon of Zatarans and we liked it. So we've done it like that ever since. Got to drain the water chestnuts. And now that I have everything prepped, I'm going to open the crock pot and throw it all in all at once. Give it a stir and cover it back up. I know right now it doesn't look like it'll fit, but it will. Nothing white and hairy growing on them, so. No. Nothing hairy. <laughs> Trust me, it'll fit, especially once the mushrooms start to cook down. I am a horribly messy cook, as you can now see. Just whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that reminds me of a story. We went out on a date night once, and we were just uh, bumming around Madison, and we went to this place called the Mad City Seafood Boiler, and that's what it does. They're a seafood boil place, which means they do uh, like crawfish style boils. And everything's boiled in a bag. You order your food by the pound. So if you want blue shell crab, crab legs, shrimp, shrimp crawfish. crawfish, you order by the pound. They throw other things in there, corn and, uh, and potatoes. Um, sausage I think was extra. But anyway, so we ordered. Jen got the blue shell crab, I got the crawfish. And she got hers with a, jeez, woman, food fight! But she, <laughs> she got uh, the blue shell crab, I got the crawfish, she also got the, you got the, what was it, the garlic butter seasoning blend, and I had uh, Creole, Cajun Creole seasoning. 
But anyway, so we're sitting there and we're having a good time, we're having a good conversation. She's digging at one of her blue shell crab legs with the little crab fork, you know, and she's really getting in there and stuff like that. And she's got it hooked and she's pulling on it and pulling on it. Suddenly it slips and goes, and that little piece of meat flung up against the window that was right next to us facing the outside. We were both dying <laughs> laughing. That was a good date. I really enjoyed myself on that. I think that was for my birthday, wasn't it? Or something like that? I don't remember. Could have been. Yeah. But yeah, it was a good date. Hey guys, um, don't know if you saw my last video or not. It was the trip that I took with John. But I'm curious on if you heard what I want to do. I'm thinking about changing the name of my channel. And it's primarily because I want something that's more associated to the content that I put up on the channel. I mean, I don't mind using my personal name, I, you know, it is what it is, but in order to draw more people in, I'm thinking about changing the name of the channel to something that is more indicative of what I'm doing with the channel. So, being I basically do three different things on my channel. I do cooking, I do riding, and I do hiking. I'm thinking about changing the name of the channel to Chef Biker Hiker. Let me know what you think of that. Comment down below, right? Should I change the name of the channel to Chef Biker Hiker? Okay, so I'm finally coming up on the uh, end of the cooking process, so I need to uh, get my little slurry mix of cornstarch and water dumped in and stirred in. And uh, actually, Jen's on her way back from the grocery store, so I need to do this so I can get it out of the way so we put groceries on the counter here. <laughs> I'm just gonna let this sit off to the side for a while. I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, it could sit in there for a half hour, another hour, or something like that. And it doesn't really matter. Uh, the big thing is though, is if you had your crock pot on low for the longer cook time, the six to seven hour cook time, you'll now wanna crank it up to high because you'll need to get that uh, liquid as hot as possible so it can thicken up the sauce. <laughs> Check out home. We got all of our groceries all put away. Um, I pulled out the rice maker. We are going to make rice. I'm going to show you how to use this particular model. And if you have a rice cooker, it could be a little bit different for you, but this is what we have to do for ours. This is a little steamer basket. Um, you put vegetables on here and cook off vegetables while you're actually cooking your rice. I don't really use it. Jen says that she measures out her rice in here and she'll actually rinse the rice off again something I just don't do so I don't do anything with this now our rice cooker actually came with this little cup and I will measure out three of these and then inside the pot here inside the pot you have these measurements that are on the uh, on the edge in fact <laughs> you can see them imprinted there as well I'm trying to see if I can get it in there, but uh, basically the two, four, six, and eight um, that tells you how much water to put in per uh, measuring cup. Okay, so for each of those little measuring cups, I'm going to, so if I'm doing three, I'm going to go halfway between the two and the four. It's three. Okay, so like I said, now we're just going to fill the canister between the two and the four mark in here. Yeah. That's about halfway between the two and the four. So now we just need to put that in there. We'll put the lid on, plug it in. And then we just hit the little button here. And it goes into cook mode. There's a little red light that just came on. Alright, now I just let that sit until the yellow warm light comes on and the rice is done. Nope.
no, no, no. You do not stir that. All right, that rice has got to cook. You just leave it alone, okay? Don't, don't, don't stir it. Okay, rice cooker is done. Okay, now, for me personally, once the rice cooker is done, I like to unplug it because it will start to, start to uh, scorch and stick to the uh, inner pot. So I like to unplug it because when it hits that warm, it does keep it warm, okay? So there's a little bit of heat still being generated and I don't want my rice to cook anymore. So that is done. My crock pot with the bourbon chicken in it is done. And I even nuked off some green beans and they're done. All right, now we can take off this lid. Be careful, there's some steam here. Don't want to burn yourself. I will now give this a stir. Just kind of break up the, the rice so it's not one big clump anymore. Yep. Ah, clots. Alright, so that looks pretty good. And this looks really good too. Mmm. Time to dish up. Uh, the green beans, all I did was a little bit of butter and some black pepper. Bit of rice. And some chicken. And don't forget a couple of ladles of the sauce. Mm. Hey yo guys, how's that for a plate of food? Looks pretty good, let's go eat. Now that looks like a good meal right there. I tend to want to eat my vegetables first because they get cold the quickest. Mm. Green beans are done just enough. They don't taste frozen. They actually taste fresh. I left them a little crispy yet. I like that. All right. Let's try a nice big chunk of chicken here. Mmm. That's really good. Got a little bit of ginger that's in there. That's like the first thing that hits you. Rice is cooked perfectly. It's not hard, it's not mushy. The added onions and mushrooms are nice too. So you guys gotta try this one. It's really good, it's really easy. Crock pot recipes usually are very easy. You just throw everything in the crock pot set and forget it. Um, we had to add cornstarch there at the end. Okay, so <laughs> it's really good. Mm. So this is Mark saying thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the road. This is Victoria's friend. She has no idea she's going to be on YouTube. Oh, yeah. uh, but I'm going to ask her how her meal was because she had the chicken dish with us. It was really good. <laughs>